By feeding them by hand is a great relationship builder. So going out during feeding time doesn't necessarily mean it's all about feeding, it's about play. It's about getting to know the animals. Through the relationship building, we're actually able to do wellness assessments on the animals. And through those daily interactions that we have with them, our animals learn how to participate in their own health care. So our animals learn behaviors that allow us to take really excellent care of them. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, the feeding process is pretty routine. Uh, we have dietary sheets and protocols prescribed for the animals. We work pretty closely with our animal health department to look at the nutritional needs of the animals and then decide what we need to feed them. A lot of the, the reptiles we, we have will eat the fruits and veggies. Over here we've got just a selection of frozen foods that's pulled for tomorrow. So I've got squid, clam, large Pacific krill, salmon, silver sides, small krill, and shrimp. This is a pretty good saltwater diet uh, that we have over here. And we do feed some of the freshwater stuff here too, but this is what we'd feed to the Caribbean reef exhibit. And then over here are the, the dry foods I was talking about. So it's a pellet um, that's just pretty densely packed with the nutrition and vitamins and stuff for the fish. I know from experience and accidents happening that some of the prepared diets like our, our pellets and stuff don't taste real good, but the fish love them. <laughs> Adult sea turtles are primarily herbivores. So her diet here is literally just different greens. We give her a mix of romaine lettuce, endive, escarole, dandelion greens, and bok choy. Some of them she likes better than others. Generally the like kind of softer leafed ones she tends to like a little bit more. Where we're sourcing the food from is very sustainable. Uh, so we've changed vendors several times based on uh, harvesting techniques and what the ingredients are to make sure that we're doing the best that we can for the world outside of us as well. And that goes all the way to growing and harvesting as much of the food on site as we can. These are actually bugs that we were able to culture here at the aquarium. And a cool thing about that, besides culturing them here, we're also able to feed them food that we grow here at the aquarium. Yeah! I'm about to feed our archer fish, which is a very exciting feed because they have a very unique way of eating. So they actually spit arrows of water, if you will, that's why they're called archer fish, um, at their food. So they'll be looking up in the branches um, and for bugs or other bugs uh, flying around, spit water at them so they fall in the water and then they eat them that way. Feeding it this way allows them to elicit this natural behavior and gives them a bit of enrichment. And then they're also getting this nice little bonus, which is the cricket for them to eat. They have all different ways that they're able to get this food this way, like the way that their eyes are near the top of their heads and kind of pointing up so they can look out of the water, the way that their bodies are long and slender so that they, when you're looking down, they're very hard to see. So as they're at the surface looking up out of the water, no one's seeing them. And even then the shape of their mouth is literally designed to make that good arch of water for them to hit their targets like this. I'll be feeding the cow no stingrays today. They will be a little bit of splashy. <laughs> we're starting a new feed program for the cow no stingrays. So we're allowing guests to experience what it's like for us feeding these stingrays. This is part of their current diet. So this is something that's healthy, it's sustainable, it's ethical. We recommend that a guest would take one fish or two, take it in the palm, you fold your thumb in, and then wrap around. So this keeps your fingers safe and then it keeps the stingrays safe. Even though I'm hand feeding them, I allow them to come just to me and feed only <laughs> if they want to. Their mouths are located underneath their bodies and that is a evolutionary adaptation for these animals. In the wild, these animals would be digging in the sand and in the substrate, looking for shelled items. So like shrimp, clams, any kind of crustaceans and crabs and those kinds of things to crunch on. <laughs> it's like a little vacuum cleaner. Food that the cow nose stingrays eat is all restaurant grade, sustainably caught food items that humans would eat. Working in the field for 18 years now, one of the things you pick up on is if animals aren't comfortable, they tend to not eat. So when you have animals that are eating really well, it's a good indication that they're comfortable in their environment. And it's also a way to get them to come a little closer to us because they like the food. So when we feed them, it's a good way for us to just monitor their body condition and health and things like that. Actually, let me throw some pellets in with them and uh, show, you, show you what I mean about them coming over. 
So these are uh, Midas cichlids in this enclosure. And as soon as you throw the food in there, they all want to come over and say hi. In this kitchen, we're preparing diets for our penguins, sea otters, sea lions, dolphins, and our largest animals, our beluga whales. Every morning, we have a staff member that comes in right around 5 a.m. to get this process started because it does take us a couple hours from start to finish to hand sort all of this food. We go through hundreds of pounds of fish every morning to prepare our animals' diets. Our largest belugas eat over 50 pounds of food a day. To give you an idea of what that looks like, 50 pounds is more than three of these silver buckets right here. So it's a good quantity of fish. But each of our nine beluga whales has a specific diet prepared for each one of them. They're all slightly different. And all of these food items um, provide them with different nutritional content that they need to have a well-rounded diet. So the herring is gonna be loaded with more fat and protein, whereas the capelin and the squid is gonna be a great source of hydration for them. Beluga whales are opportunistic feeders, so as they come across a school of fish, these animals can take a whole mouthful all at once and swallow that whole. Beluga whales have anywhere from 30 to 40 teeth in their mouth, but they don't use their teeth to chew their fish, they swallow it whole. So typically the teeth are used to grasp onto the fish, then they can break it up and then swallow it if it's something a little bit larger than their head. The greatest part of my job is actually getting to know all of those animals one-on-one -on -one as individuals because they're all a little bit different and full of personality in their own way. Our animals will offer many natural behaviors and so we use our different hand signals as a way to communicate with them what behavior we'd like to see from them. And so some of these behaviors they create and offer on their own and we just pair that with a specific hand signal that the animals know to associate those two things together. Green sea turtles are kind of getting rarer in aquarium settings because they're endangered in the wild. The only way we can get them now is if they're non-releasable injuries. Nickel is a boat strike injury animal. Uh, as you can see right here where the boat hit her and because of that injury, she can't really control the buoyancy on the back of her shell. She couldn't be released back into the wild. Uh, she wouldn't be very good at finding food. And uh, she'd also be at a pretty high risk of getting hit by a boat again. One of the nice things about our training programs with Nickel and, and the animals here at the aquarium, as you can see, we're, we're in this big exhibit. She doesn't have to be here. Um, she, she comes over voluntarily and she gets a prescribed diet every day. So if she never came over here to take the food from me, uh, we would feed it out um, just on lettuce weights and stuff in the enclosure and she could go get it. But it's very satisfying knowing that they're coming over here because they want to.